This is hard work. It is stressful. It is different. And it is difficult to go through it. A decision for life. Why is it so hard when they're desperate for families to adopt? Adoption is not an unnatural relationship. Mm. It is it's exactly the same as a birth relationship. And here we are, and yet there's so much red tape to cut through. But there is no right way to come across. Nobody said it would be easy. The whole system, it must put so many people off. Love is not enough. Tuesday at 5 past 10 on BBC One. David Bowie, singer and actor. The talented artist's career is profiled in a double bill over on BBC Two now. The news here on BBC One, it's... Ministers on the defensive over Labour's slump in the opinion polls. As the party conference opens, Blair calls on Labour to keep its nerve. Milosevic votes amid growing fears that he's already rigged the result. And Denise Lewis beats the pain barrier to win Britain's fifth gold. Pensions, petrol, the dome and the polls have all thrown their shadow over the opening day of Labour's conference at Brighton. But it was a day on which the worried party faithful heard ministers take a softer line on the issues damaging Labour with the public. The Prime Minister made his priority the pensioners. Peter Mandelson said the government had appeared high-handed over the fuel crisis. Mr Blair was obviously popular at one of the innumerable parties around conference tonight, but his aides think the fuel crisis has crystallised a public mood. They've known for a long time he's seen as arrogant and out of touch. Today's interview was designed to sound a humbler note. He took responsibility for the petrol revolt. It happened on my watch, he said. Would you like to make fuel cheaper then? Of course we'd all like to do it. The question is whether you can do it responsibly and given your other priorities. Getting it all off his chest, a clearly anxious Mr Blair conceded the dome had been too ambitious. If I had known then what I know now about governments trying to run a visitor attraction of this, or these types of visitor attraction, it would probably have been too ambitious a thing for a government to have tried to do. I mean, if you look, for example, at Euro Disney, it took several years before it settled down. You're very well. Perhaps a nervous moment as Mr Blair met an 82-year-old at a party tonight. Pensions are likely to be the big row of this conference. The unions want them put up in line with average pay. Mr Blair seemed to agree the 75 pence increase had looked a bit mean. Although it was done absolutely according to the rules, pensioners perfectly naturally look at the 75p every week and don't take account of you know, the winter allowance, which is now going up to £150, and, and all the other things that we are doing for pensioners. So I totally understand that, but you know, it's a bit like with the rest of these issues, in the end it will come to a choice between ourselves and the Conservatives. It was left to the ever popular Mo Molum in her farewell speech to actually say the word sorry. She's leaving Parliament and the Cabinet at the next election, and she was characteristically straightforward. Can I say I'm sorry to those that are disappointed? But I hope above all, like me, you'll fight tooth and nail to stand up for what we believe in, fairness, justice and equality. Peter Mandelson was another minister on the We're So Sorry circuit, but in the current tense atmosphere, his apology is being interpreted as an attack on the Chancellor. When people heard us then react or respond to this, I think people felt that on the issue, the, the, the meat of the issue, uh, that we were um, a bit unsympathetic and a little high-handed, and I think that we got that wrong. The government's woes may have a paradoxical effect here. The instinct of many delegates will be to rally round, except on pensions. Some people are feeling very angry indeed about the last few weeks, and the anger is reflected in, in, in many different ways. It's one of stiffening the spine, as it were, to make that fight worthwhile and win the next election. I think this is the opportunity for the government to prove they're going to come out fighting. They're going to re-engage the voters and start turning over the Tory lead in the polls. A sorry may be the hardest word, but what's really difficult is changing your behaviour after an apology. And on pensions at least, there's no sign that the government's going to budge. A senior Treasury adviser told me the policy is right, and he added, it's not going to change, it's just not going to happen. Mark Mardell, BBC News, Brighton. The votes are being counted in the crucial Yugoslav elections. President Milosevic's supporters are claiming victory. 
and so are the opposition. There have been widespread allegations of ballot rigging, with independent observers describing the vote as a complete mess. Tonight, both sides are holding a series of rallies in Belgrade, where there's a heavy police presence. There's little doubt who he's voting for. Slobodan Milosevic and his wife were among the first people to cast their ballots. He's hoping for another four years as president. She wants a seat in parliament. Most people in Serbia see these elections as a referendum on the past 10 years of Milosevic's rule. It's been 10 years of war and economic hardship, but still he's held on to power. Many in the West thought the bombing of Yugoslavia last year would finish Mr. Milosevic off. His troops were defeated in Kosovo, while NATO airstrikes destroyed factories and oil refineries. Many Serbs blamed Mr. Milosevic for this devastation, but they couldn't see any alternative to his leadership. Now they can, and his name is Vojislav Koštunica. The opposition candidate in these elections is hugely popular, despite his lack of charisma. For many ordinary people, he embodies their hopes for political change. The government knows it's going to lose, because the people are no longer afraid. Now they are going to do what previously they could only dream about.